This is Martin Luther King on steroids. I think you're better than Martin Luther King. I think you are. Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm back again with another video. I know it's like, oh, you know, you just my being consistent. I, I know. I, I already know. But, you know, it's, it's like I said before, if you watched my last video, I got a lot going on. Like, I seriously have a lot going on. And just trying to find time and motivation to get everything doing on one side and then get my other stuff as far as my content creation done on this side. So, I'm trying to get more consistent about it this week. So this is why this video is going up today. It's going to be another video tomorrow. So I'm trying to get, get at least three videos posted a week, if not four. And oh, got to hold me to it. <laughs> I want to try. It's going to be. It's not going to all be all be political stuff. It's going to be a mixture of gameplay because I haven't played any games on this channel in a minute. And part of my thing is gaming. It's not about video games all the time, but still, it is part of gaming. A lot of people did follow me from my gaming content. And I want to, to deliver on that too. So I have been playing Star Wars on my other streams. So if you follow me on my other channel where I'm actually doing live streams, you can watch me play uh, Star Wars. So, you know, I am going to bring some content over here. So, you know, everybody just be patient with me. If you follow me again, I thank y'all for following me and rocking with me because I do appreciate it because I do have a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, it's, it's hard. They're not even giving no excuses, but I will say it's, you know, it, to be successful in this, in any form of content creation, you got to be consistent about it. You got to always, regardless in, regardless of what's going on, you got to always be uploading content. No matter what you have going on in your personal life, no matter what you're doing, if you work a full-time job too, because I still work a full-time job too, on top of trying to run a business. So it's it's a lot for me, and I do volunteer work too. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot on my plate, and it's trying to find that balance, and I'm not a good scheduler. Like I'm not really even in my my big old age of, of, of 46 years old. I'm not a good scheduler. I am terrible at schedule. I need I can't. I shouldn't say that, but I want to get better. So as it stands now, I'm not a great with it, but I'm getting better at it. And I'm trying to I'm going to plan to get better at scheduling my stuff and getting stuff recorded and getting stuff edited up and posted on all of my channels and stuff because I run every I'm a one stop shop. I run everything on my side. So with that being said, it's like I know y'all. You know I know just like me, y'all are getting tired of this whole political commentary. And I'm gonna try to keep this video as short as possible. I generally try to, t I generally talk over an hour when it comes to my stuff, but I'm gonna try to keep this one like at most 30 minutes. So if I start talking real fast, y'all just bear with me. Pause it, go back on it if you need, to, if you miss something that I said because I was talking too fast. But I'm gonna try to get this one, make it down to 30 minutes. So it, I know it's, it's political season, like I just said, and I know y'all getting tired of all the stuff. Like I'm getting tired of like the text messages, especially if you're a volunteer too. So you get the text messages, you get the emails. People are always inviting you out of stuff. And then because you're active in this, you get to see the ignorance and lies on both sides, but generally one side. <laughs> and I've also started a series, too, to kind of point out some of the stuff, to some of the lies that people be spreading. So one of the things I hear all the time, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge super fan of the Democratic Party. Y'all heard me say that, especially since I'm a, I was a former candidate myself, too, and I saw the trash they was doing. But I still got to give credit where credit is due. Like, generally speaking, when it comes to stuff getting passed, when it's, I don't care what community you're helping out. I don't care if it's LBGTQ rights. I don't care if it's helping out the black community or, you know, immigrants or, you know, in the minority communities. Generally speaking, is one side trying to do something more than the other one. And that side is the Democratic Party. Like there is bills and policies that they're actively trying to get pushed or they, 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 they need to go to the House Speaker to actually be able to be brought to the floor to be voted on. And so, but the Democratic Party are the ones doing that. The Republicans are not doing that. And I'm like, I've asked people time and time again, they want to argue with me about stuff. I was like, well, show me a policy. And they get annoyed when people say that. But I'm like, show me a policy that actually helps out American people and helps out people in general. And, you know, I'll, ba I'll back up off of them. I gave them one here in the state of Georgia where they actually tried, they rolled mental health care under actual um, your health care providers. So you no longer have to pay for mental health care treatments out of pocket. It's actually enrolled into your insurance, which is a good thing. And I had to give them credit for that. And I think it's primarily because, you know, a lot of kids in the opioid crisis and the kids out here Xing themselves. I can't say it like that because I don't want to get taken down from me saying the word. So um, they um, had to pass that to make it easier for average regular people that can't afford, you know, going to a therapist because it is very expensive. I had to pay for I paid for some myself and I had to pay for my kid to go to therapy, too, during the pandemic. So I've started, a, I said it to say, I started a, a new series and I mean, it's, you know, I post it when I find, I post it not when I find stuff, I post it when I have time to, to make it called Dim Your Busy. And what Dim Your Busy is, 
to highlight some of the things or the policies that's been written down or things that's been signed into place that actually helps out the average American from the Democratic Party, especially when it comes to helping out uh, the, the black community. And I have to put it like that because, I mean, we are the ones that disenfranchised. <laughs> we are the ones that have policy created against us to prevent us from excelling in this country. So anytime anybody writes a policy or a bill, whether it's been signed off into place, it is something good because it goes to show you that the elected officials trying to work towards you. That's why I started a series up and I am highlighting the bills that's actually been signed into place by the party versus what's not been done by the other side, which is the Republican Party. Like, I got to call a spade to call a spade. I mean, it is what it is. So it showcases that. So in this episode, I'm gonna, I want to talk about, you know, the sociopath is running for office right now for the presidency and the enablers being his voters because I can't call them victims because, you know, generally speaking, when you got somebody following social paths, you can say that, oh, they're a victim or, you know, enablers. But at this point in time now, you can't play victim. And they, I mean, when I say playing a victim, meaning you can't play victim to them trying to manipulate you because of what they're doing and manipulating you to help you have you help them out to get whatever they're trying to get. I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's power it's, or, you know, or attention. It's, in this case, with this fool, it's all of those things. And, and the reason I say I can't let them have play the victim is because we all have access to computers, which is another one of my arguments where I make to people like we have access to computers in our pocket. So even if you don't have a physical, physical desktop computer or a laptop, you still have a phone in your pocket that you can use to look up content and, 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 and fact check what people are saying. And that's on both sides. Like it's not just primarily for Republicans when it's not primarily just for Democrats. It's, I mean, it's for both sides. I mean, I don't care if it's for school. I don't care if it's for pastors. I mean, your, your, your church, I, you know, I don't care what it is. It's not fact check what people are telling you. Don't just take what people are saying, you know, just to take it on the whim, just take it like that because it's what they're giving to you. No, no, you have to validate things and see because they could be wrong and they don't know that they're wrong because nobody has told them that they're wrong or, they, you know, they generally could be lying to you, which in most cases, and especially this fool, that's what they're doing. He's just blatantly lying to people. So, it, it, you know, that's why I'm like, I can't say that they're, they're victims. So as not to get too carried away, let's take a look at the differences in messaging for the two, like between, you know, Harris and between 45 and take a look at some of the bills that uh, the right themselves are taking advantage of due to the Biden administration passing them. And one of those first things is, is the Inflation Reduction Act and the Chips and Science Act. And one of the things that agitates me the most with one of these with 45 supporters is, is Elon Musk. And the issue I have with him is the fact that he um, talks so much about, you know, uh, Vice President Harris being a communist and she wants to, you know, take this country to a place. And they talking about the policies that's written because according to them that, you know, if it's coming under the Biden administration, then she technically is the Biden administration. But I'm like with the Inflation Reduction Act and the Chips and Science Act. He himself alone criticized the administration so much, but he took $3 billion from the administration because of the act that was put into place. So he got a problem with Biden and he got a problem with VP Harris, who's going to be President Harris. And But yet he has no issue with taking the money from them in the administration. So it's just the hypocrisy behind people that, that rouse people up on their side and their base and, you know, they don't even and it's like they put this smoke and mirrors up, but they're not telling the people what they're taking on the back end from these very same people they're talking about is bad, which is what I hate about the Republican Party, because they'll sit there and they won't vote. On, they won't vote on policies that the Democrats are trying to put out. But then once they're passed, they'll take advantage of those policies and try to get and they'll not try to. They will get money from the government. And then you have this fool himself, 45. He's mad about a young lady because she didn't endorse him. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> like, what type of person are you to where you want all the attention on yourself, no matter good or bad? Like, no, no, you know, it's all you want all to be good. I can't say good or bad. No, you want all of it to be good. So I mean, I'm not talking about in reference to Taylor Swift. So Taylor Swift has always been a left-leaning Democrat. Like, she's always been a left-leaning Democrat. I mean, you can't question that. She's always been that. So I had, you know, no doubt in my mind that she would not support the Harris administration. Like, she wouldn't support, you know, them running for office. And it wasn't until the DNC was over with and she heard, well, not even the DNC, but the um, actual debate between Harris and 45 that, you know, she endorsed VP uh, Kamala Harris. And I'm like, and then... 
And you knew it was coming. I mean, because she supported Biden. I mean, but and it's like, so you knew it was coming. You know, I don't know why she waited so long, but, you know, she don't have to come out and, and, and announce anything. But the fact is, like, she did. And in doing so, Orange Man got, like, pissed off and agitated. But I was like, why would you get mad about something? If you knew that she was going to do that anyway. So he got on, you know, Fox and Friends and he was talking about it. And he said it for himself. I was not a Taylor Swift fan. It was just a question of time. She couldn't, uh, you couldn't possibly endorse Biden. You look at Biden, you couldn't possibly endorse him. But she's a very liberal person. She seems to always endorse a Democrat. Uh, and she'll prob- probably pay a price for it at the uh, in the marketplace. But then the very next day that he went, he goes on a rant and he types in all caps, I hate Taylor Swift. But I'm like, dude, what what are you so mad about when it comes to this individual and who she supports? I'm like, Yo, you got H- Hogan supporting you and you got Kid Rock. And like I said, I've spoken about this once, but truly the youth are the deciding factor on elections because they make up the largest number, the largest majority of, of registered voters if they show up to vote. And I think that's what scares the Republicans when it comes to the youth, which is why they truly want to restrict their rights and create uh, content creators to influence them because they want to they want to manipulate these kids that's out there right now. And one of these cases came about in the case of Russia uh, paying RT, this, this media company. And it's like a good strategy because I, I, do think it's, I think it's a good strategy because influencers are being watched by the young and they take what they say to help in, in basing their opinions on who they will vote for. So, and, and one thing I had, you know, that you get in your opinions or you get in your facts from influencers, which again, like I said before, and you're not validating those facts, you're just taking them for what they're saying at face value and you just running with it. And that's the issue. One of the issues I have with parents nowadays, some parents nowadays, you're not raising your kids to be critical thinkers. I mean, you, you're not raising your kids to be critical thinkers. If they got to, if they're taking what an influencer says and they're not validating what an influencer said to be true, and they're taking it as word is bond and that's, they, they running with that. Mm, yeah, that's kind of on a, cause one thing I taught my kids, no matter if it's coming from me, I taught my kids from day one when they got old enough to think for themselves. I'm like, if I tell you something and I'm telling you as something as to be a fact, not from this regular parental stuff, but I don't care if it's politics. I don't care if it's, you know, for, you know, religious stuff because we're, you know, we're Christians around here or it's a uh, business or, you know, whatever. As long as it's not parental to me telling you to do something because it's what you got to do around the house. Look it up. Like, look it up. Don't take what I say. Don't, don't turn around and repeat what I said and I could be telling you something wrong because of my own ignorance. And I, I'm not trying to say I'm perfect. I am ignorant sometimes. I, 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 like I made the video about what I, I had suspicion about Kamala and who she locked up in California. I was wrong on that. And I made a whole video apologizing about it because I was wrong on it. But I did spread some of those, that fake stuff around and I was ignorant to it. And I take ownership of what I was doing. So that's I'm like, don't take what I say as as you know, is the 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 bond the, is I'm right itself, but go back and fact check it yourself. But they do this because they're trying to build a strong army of not just the old, but to get the youth so they can fight for them in the years to come, hence them, you know, both being enablers and so-called victims to that sociopath 45 in the Republican Party. So and, you know, I can accept people playing the victim part to a degree, but like I said, not anymore. I'm like, you can act like you're a victim. If you're new to it, then I can say that you're a victim. But if you're new to it and it's reshared again and then you don't really go back and think about what you, what they said to you, you're not a victim any, anymore. You're an enabler. And, you know, all of anything that you spread is pretty much on you. But what I also find interesting is how they play a double standard accusing them with things. Yet when their own party does it, they make an excuse as to it's not what they meant. Such as, you know, uh, J.D. Vance comparing 45 to Hitler and saying that he was stoking the fire racism in his country. Yet now he's in love and he supports him. And again, it's not, he's just an, an opportunity, it's just like the whole fake. Like they always talk about people, call people on fake news. But this man spread this whole rumor about uh, dogs and cats being eaten by Haitians in, in Springfield, Ohio. And then come to find out, he admits to Dana Bash on CNN that he was making it all up and he was doing it for attention. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have a to meme, create sorry. stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana. So it's like, who is the fake? Who who is the fake news? Like who who is the fake news around here? It's not the Democrats. It's the actual Republicans themselves. 
and it's like, and, and he's just an opportunist. And I'm like, I've seen, you. I've, I've met plenty of people like him working in corporate America for all these 20 something years. I've met plenty of people like him, which is why I couldn't do it because I care too much about the people that I manage and don't care too much about the people that I work with to where I'm not going to lie on, on you. I'm not making something up to make you look bad just so I can get hit. I'm just not doing that. And so these are things that we've always understood about them and the Republican Party as a whole. And they always want to say, oh, well, the Democrats, you know, y'all were the ones doing this because y'all were the Republican Party. I'm like, okay, and, and, and you know, parties switched over. And I tend to argue with them a lot due to them making so, so many, I mean, they make so many accusations about stuff and what the Democrats are doing. And yet, one thing I always say to them, so especially with one guy I was arguing with the other day, or whenever y'all see this, I was arguing with him one day online. And he was talking about Fulton County here in the state of Georgia about how they was committing voter fraud and it was manipulating the elections and stuff. And I was like, you know what? And it's always been argued and it's been, um, <laughs> they, it, you know, the courts have got, it's been adjudicated that, you know, there is nothing that they have no evidence to say, to verify that what they're saying is to be true. But my, my, my point and my argument to all of them that say this is, I was like, you know, if you volunteered and you work for these organizations that do this stuff, you would know that what you're saying is not true, but I said, but you won't do that because if it did, it will go against the point that you're trying to make. Because I was like, if you want to say Fulton County is committing or any or, or, or places committing voter fraud, I was like, they have jobs for ballot counters. Every single time, election time, they're trying to fill roles for ballot counters and they have a hard time doing it. So I was like, if you're so concerned about election fraud, why don't you sign up to be a ballot counter? Like generally, why don't you sign up to be a ballot counter? Why don't you sign up to do voter registration? If you're so concerned about people getting registered to vote that are undocumented, why don't you do voter registration yourself? And it's because they don't want to. It's they want to place all this blame on people and they don't want to do none of this. They don't want to actually get out and do the hard work and see for themselves. I do it. Like somebody tried to clap at me about it. And I was like, let me go down my whole resume because I do all this stuff. I'm boots on the ground. Like I am boots on the ground person. All those things that I've just entertaining about. I said I said doing ballot counting. I, you know, I don't want to do that. But I don't have no issues with the people that's in there doing that. I to to sit down in there. I'm an anal person, but not to that degree. To sit down there and count ballots. I, I mean, God bless those people. I say anything about the nursing field and teachers. God bless those people that sit down in there doing it because that's not something that I want to see myself doing. But I am not knocking on doors. I do voter registration, I do canvassing work, and I do lit drops, and I do work on people's campaigns to help them out on top of my day job and everything else I have going on, including this podcast and stuff that I'm doing too. So his argument to me was, you know, he got 27 years working on his nonprofit and on boards and stuff, and he's helped out with policy with the LBGTQ arguing for them. And I was like, I don't care, I don't care about you how long you got working on nonprofits. If you're not volunteering or signing up to get paid to be a ballot person. And but you want to see him make these accusations, then I don't want to hear it because I mean I work on boards. I mean that means nothing to me, but I'm one. I'm actually out there, like I said, I'm the one doing the work. And I say that to all these Republicans that are out here. I'm like I don't ever see nobody canvassing. Like I don't ever see them out canvassing. I see them on the side of roads with you know 45 uh, tents and stuff, waving flags and whatnot. But I don't ever see them doing canvassing work. I don't ever see them trying to uh, change over voters' opinions about anybody by knocking on people's doors and talking to them about key issues that they're trying to push because they have no key issues. Now, and and all is though, I'm still not saying that the Democratic Party is perfect. I'm not saying that. You've heard me go on many a rants for those that are OGs to my channel and you've been around for a long time. You've heard me go on a many a rants about the party in itself and the shady stuff that they do. So don't even make it seem like, you know, that I'm saying that we're per that the Dems are they are not perfect, but we ain't the ones out here accusing people of eating dogs and cats. And we for dog on sure ain't out here talking about people are killing babies at the ninth month. Because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in, they're eating the cats, they're eating they're eating the pets of the people that live there. Control. We think we have it very well under control. We pretty much shut it down. A lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat. We're in very good shape. I think it's going to work out fine. Very well under control in our country. So anyway, let's, let's look at, we just looked at one side and let's talk about the stark difference between his side, the Republican side and the 45 side versus the Harris and, and, and the Democratic side of the party and how she interacts with people because this dude won't even come down 
to get close to Harley, any babies. And it, I mean, and, and he's hard pressed to do that because he's going on rants the whole time. Like all of his rallies, he's going on all these long tangent, hateful rants and talking about people. And I'm just like, but, but her, at least she's staying true to point. She's staying true to the message. She's staying true to actually trying to care about people. That's what she's saying. And I'm not saying that what she says she's going to actually pass and do, but there is a difference in convincing people to vote out of love and out of compassion versus out of fear. And they were doing that with Biden, which is why I was like, I will go down with the sinking ship by not voting for him. Like, I wouldn't be the guy on a Titanic playing the violin, going down, just going to drown with everybody because I'm like, I am not voting for that fool. So now that he's gone, there isn't, I mean, they are playing fear to, you know, 45 being bad, but he is bad. I'm like, technically speaking, he is bad. And so that's why I'm like, when I talk about uh, key issues too, I'm like, look at the bills it's trying to get passed. Like there, there's a bill now that was written by, and I told, I wrote about it before, but it, it's um, the, the Black Wealth Agenda. And I forget the young lady's name. I'll, I'll put it down below. But I talked about her in my damn you busy, one of my damn you busy episodes. And you have to look at the messaging that's coming from Harris and what she's trying to do to combine us back together and to get us past this, device, this de- divisiveness and to get away from identity politics and get back into helping each other out because that's what we have to do. That's why I was raised and I was raised in the racist South. Like I've come from South, South Georgia. I was raised in the racist South. And even being raised in that, my grandparents and my parents always said, you know, you still got to watch out for people and watch out of your own, watch how they treat your people. But we also have to work together because we have to work together for the work together for the benefit of our community, for the benefit of our state and for the benefit of our country. And for us to be able to collectively work together as a benefit of the species as a whole for the human species. And in order for us to do that, we have to get past race, politics, religion and things of that nature. But, and that's what this campaign has been running on. That's what this campaign has been pushing. And that is the love that the uh, Vice President Harris has been spreading, especially Tim Waltz. I mean, he's an average, everyday man that is in office, that, that is a governor, <laughs> helping his people out. I mean, plain and simple, just helping his people out. And that's what we need in office right now. So only thing I say, I say all that to say is, Watch who you, um, you're supporting. Watch who you're voting for. Pay attention to policies. Pay attention to what they're trying to do. Always look at the bottom line of what they're trying to do, they do for you as an individual. You heard me say this before. Look what they're doing for you as an individual and then how they're treating other people in other countries. And that's how you determine who you should be supporting. Because 45 don't care about nobody but him. He said he cared about you, but he don't care about nobody except because he said he, don't, he loves the ignorant and uneducated. And he talk, always talked about what he's done for the blacks, which he ain't done nothing for the blacks. And then he talked about, you know, how he's going to make this nation great again. When was it? When has it ever been great? I, I mean, we can go down all the time. When has it ever been great? Because it might have been great for one side, but it was not great for everybody as a whole. So thank you for tuning in this episode. I promise you I'm going to get more consistent. I, I promise you. I can't say when, but I promise you to get more consistent and try to upload, not try to, I am going to actively upload three to four times a week to get more content out there. So there's political content, there is technology content, and then there's also gaming content that's put out there too. And also, you know, if you all are interested in doing <laughs> any of these things that I am doing right now, then I have my business engineering tomorrow. Engineering engineering tomorrow, we help to bring the vision from out your head into fruition. And that's through all forms of content creation. I don't care if it's creating ads for your business or you want to record your own podcast or doing any form of content creation, or if you've already recorded the content and you need somebody to edit it up for you, engineering tomorrow can be here for you to create your uh, trade reels and to create shorts for anybody. Doesn't matter if you're a small business owner or an individual. Or even a major corporation. That's what we're here for. We also do IT training. We also are getting to cloud engineering. So if you want to transition over from an AWS or, you know, um, on Azure to get over into Google Cloud production and or if you want to just get it established in general, we're doing it for you along with doing a data center. So the whole purpose of engineering tomorrow is to be a one stop shop for all of your content needs. I don't care what organization you're for. I don't care if it's a school. I don't care what it's for, for you to come to us, help you out with training your staff on technology, 
getting up to speed on the equipment that you're using to record your content or doing your daily day, your day to day work and or having a place to store your content, which is a cloud creation and or your own personal data center. So you have stuff locally and in the cloud. So if you're using like uh, AI stuff, it's not pulling, you're not storing stuff directly into the cloud itself It's local based, which is in your data center house within your own business and or your house. And then once all that stuff is done encapsulated, <laughs> then we're taking that content and then we're making ads, we're making reels and we're making shorts and we're doing everything we can to make sure your business have all that it needs in any form of content, data storage and whatever to be successful. And that is Engineering Tomorrow. We're here for you. So thank you guys for tuning in to this, this episode, this week's episode. Love you all. As always, be active, be safe. And I said, always say, you know, leave, take, take your three L's every day, live for today, laugh about things that you have no control over and lead in love with your heart. Thank you all for tuning in this episode. Love you all. Peace.